the slaves had been kept in there were free and were the slave ships were actually condemned that the people who had enslaved these people illegally because the slave ship was illegal after 1808 actually were uh, held ransom for what they'd done by taking illegal slaves. Um, her mother was quite wealthy and her father also got a lot of wealth as well because he was a registrar in the courts of mixed commission. So her father's father, William Smith Sr., was a judge. Her father, William Smith Jr., was also a registrar in the same court that his father worked in. So you can see that there were sort of family connections which we have gone at a time where, you know, if your father was in a certain position, you may also have sort of inroads into that position as well. And so he was a registrar in the courts of mixed commission. Her mother was a very wealthy Maroon heiress. Her father was a Maroon, originally from Trelawney Town, Jamaica. His ancestors came from there. And he had made a lot of money by buying all these old slave ships that had been dropped off in Freetown. What they'd do is, after the slave ships were brought to Freetown, the free slaves were free, they'd sell the slave ships that had been taken these slaves away on auction. So a lot of Creoles developed um, trade by buying up these slave ships. So what you have is, people who had been liberated off slave ships sometimes would go to an auction later on, would buy and acquire these slave ships and use them to transport, to transport goods to Nigeria, the Cameroons, I mean the Creole diaspora were everywhere in West Africa and beyond. And so that's what out of the case the Hafer's background was. She came from quite an upper class wealthy Creole background. Uh, one thing I mentioned at the very beginning is the fact that she was unique and that she actually grew up in England. Uh, of course, nowadays and in the 1950s, 1960s, my grandparents, you know, came here and other people, you know, came to London to study and to settle. But back in the 1870s in Freetown, that was quite uncommon for a Creole family to leave Freetown and settle permanently in England. That was quite uncommon. And William Smith made that decision in 1872. He settled in Norwood first, and then he moved to the Channel Islands, and that's Jersey, the same heavier this island on the, on the, in Jersey. And uh, this is the college that Adelaide Casey the Hayfield attended. Jersey's Ladies College. It still exists today. It's called the Jersey College for Girls now. And she went there for a period of time as a foundation student. And after that, she went was sent to a conservatory in Germany. It's called the Stuttgart Conservatory to study music for about three years at the age of 17. And this is kind of giving you a glimpse of how Creole culture has had links to education and study going back as far back as the 1870s, 1880s, because when Adelaide Case the Hayford was studying, she was studying during the late Victorian era of the 19th century, that's sort of the 1880s, 1890s. And this is sort of obviously a picture again of where she studied. Um, obviously her father unfortunately died, um, he died in 1896, and although he had a good pension and had amassed a lot of wealth, um, unfortunately there hadn't been much left over for his children. Um, you know, unfortunately that's quite common in those days because if you're in free time, the only thing you could really invest in because they didn't have a bank through the 19th century was land and property. And if you didn't invest in that, well, then you sort of, you know, you obviously your money you'd invest in, in Britain, but it, you know, it was quite sort of uncommon necessarily for wealth always to pass down uh, through the family. It did on a lot of occasions, but sometimes it didn't. And unfortunately, William Smith decided that because he didn't have enough to leave to his kids or enough that he felt would be adequate for his daughters who are married, including um, Adelaide Casey, who at that time was 